Testing the sound on the computer. Fa la la la. Why am I thinking of deck the halls? That's just weird. Hello everyone. Hope you all are doing amazingly well. Um, I can't even begin to share all that has transpired from last week's Sunday to this Sunday. So I'm, and I'm definitely not going to say this is going to take 10 minutes. Just get your popcorn or chips or a fruit cup or bottled water, whatever it is you need, because first of all, I feel the Lord already. So let's get started. So last week I drove down to Dawsonville to be with this precious, precious couple. I call um, the wife, Mama G. I call her husband, um, Papa, but his name is Leyland. And normally I don't do names, but it's very important that I at least say his full name. So I spent some time with them. They were helping me with something actually. And they had to take me to a number of places in order to assist with um, helping me with this particular thing, right? So ended up having lunch. I feel the presence of God. Thank you, Jesus. Ended up having lunch with them and drove back up here and then drove back down there on Sunday. So you remember from the other video, the three individuals that were healed at the facility that I am serving at or working at, right? Well, let me just... Uh, so much and I, I've written everything down so okay keep that video in mind right there was three people one particular person the woman who had so much pain in her body she could hardly stand or walk is healed right so I'm going to end this video with a testimony about what she should so Sunday night I get to service or so Sunday afternoon get to service and pastor Alan of um, Warhill Church is preaching. I am going to share that video, not only share the link, which you will find in the description, please watch the entire video, but I'm going to share seven minutes of what he preached, okay? Please just stop what you're doing. If you're listening to this while you're doing the dishes or doing something else, just, just please, because it is definitely going to bless you. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. And here's Pastor Don Allen. And as I've been translating the word of God, God's been changing my heart. He's been changing the, the narrative of the way I viewed scripture because so many times my view of scripture was through a denominational background. By the way, this is at Christ Fellowship Church in Dawsonville. And so this is the moment that when God said, look at what he said. You see, the problem is he was giving, he said, I can't get your narrative unless I see this. And he didn't know he was being prophetic. So what we have here, when the Lord said, Moses said, who should I say sent me? What did the Lord respond? I am that I am. Now we understand that I am that I am because that's how you say that in English. But to a Jewish person, they understand it differently. So I'm going to stop the video there really quick. So while I was with Mama and Papa, right, at their house, prior to us leaving out, we were waiting for Mama G to get ready and Papa L started playing the organ. He started playing Eddie James' song, and I'll give you a minute to see, oh, not even a minute, a couple of seconds. Guess which Eddie song, Eddie James' song, he started playing. And that was called. I don't know. <laughs> this one's a good one right here. 
I bet you heard it. Redemption uh, dwelleth no, nigh. I know that one, this one. I am. You ever heard I it? am, yes. I am the Lord. He said, I'm the Almighty God. I am the Lord. Okay, guess not. I am. For those who don't know it, I'll leave the link for that one as well. So Saturday afternoon, he's playing the organ. Yes, a full organ in their house of I am. And now Sunday, here's Pastor Allen preaching and teaching on I am. Right? Wait for it. You see, the word in the Jewish uh, 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 word here we have uh, is the holy name of God that, that I don't have time to get into tonight. Why they have translated it different ways and why we've ended up where we've ended up in the holy name of God. But what we have here are some very, very, very important things that God said. This is how you'll find me. Stop dictating who you think I am. This is how you'll know it's me. And so what we have is a word here that is written in the Phoenician, that's translated, the Phoenician became the Hebrew. And so I want to help you with these four letters of this word. Because these four letters of this word create for us an understanding of the narrative that God has for us. Now we're English-speaking people, and having a Western mindset we read things in a linear passage from the right to, uh, from the left to the right. Yes, some of you are not English reading speaker, people, speaking people, English reading or speaking people, but he's speaking here in the United States to Dawsonville, okay? All right, keep listening. But the Jewish people don't read things from the right, uh, uh, or left to right, they read things from the right to left. So what I have here are, are, are four letters. I have Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey. Okay, Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey. Now, as I don't write that yet, this is important. I have Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey. This is where we get the word or the name Yahweh. Because we don't know the way to speak the holy name of God. Because in 2,000 years, nobody has spoken the holy name of God since the, tabernacle, or since the temple was destroyed. No one has, has spoken his holy name. So we referred to him. And this was then later because of some Roman oppression turned into Jehovah that we would say. But we have Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey. Now, you have to remember the context. God said, if you want to show people who I am, in other words, if you want to find me, if you don't want to write me and see, if I were to say to you, who is he to you? And some of you would say, he's my protector. Some of you would say, he's my deliverer. Some of you would say, he's my savior. And the names would go on and on and on. But God said, if you want to find me, I am that I am. To a Jewish mindset, and, and the jeweler actually pulled out jewelry with this image on it. He said, you're speaking of the holy name of God. Now, on the back of the paper that I provided for you, you can find there, uh, and somebody said, Pastor, why would you do that? You've been preaching, people have been shouting, can't you get them to the altars? I don't care to get you to the altars and get something that you can't, you won't stick to who you are, but because I, the first job that I have is to equip the body for the work of the ministry. Now watch this. So what I have here, we're going to translate it in the way that we would write it. 
And as we translate this, you're going to find two that look like this little man. The hay. And as I, as I look on the back there, you're going to find who God said that you, how you could find him. Watch this. The word for hay, we have it two times, is really simple. It's behold. Now this is important. In other words, I want you to see it this way. Take a look. Know this. I am that I am. Important. Behold. Then I have the Vav. And the Vav is very, very simple. The Vav, is, it, it, it settles it really quick. It's the word for peg or nail. So he said, behold the nail. So I have, behold the nail, behold, and then I have the word Yod. And the word Yod, can you can see it looks like the, an elbow there or the arm, but it's particularly translated as the hand. So he said, if you're ever looking for me, if you're ever wanting to find me, see the Jewish people, they don't look at this on this side of the cross. The Jewish people look at it on the other side of the cross. And so they believe I am that I am means I am the one who holds it all together. I am the one who created everything. I am that I am. You can count on me. I've got it. And that's powerful. But I'm not looking at it from that side of the cross. I'm looking at it as a redeemed, born again, child of the king. And I sound like Thomas, but when I start looking for, listen to me, this is important. When I start looking for the, watch this, the nail pierced hand. When I start looking for the nail pierced hand, then I'll know. Now, now see, you, you're going, I've just never heard the like. Well, don't you understand? I've never seen the like of people getting healed of cancer in the water. I've never seen the like of sins being washed away like crazy in a revival that nobody knows how to write the script for. But I want you to get this today. You may have never seen it before, but there's some Jewish people on the other side of the planet going, duh. Don't let our lack of knowledge not let us realize what he's trying to say to us. He's, my goodness, I feel the Holy Ghost. He says, stop looking at me as the one who has to heal this or fix that or do that. And he said, you start looking for the nail pierced hand. And when you look for the nail pierced hand, you'll run into a God who will change your story. Can you give God some praise tonight? So I'm going to stop the video there. Please watch the entire message because, oh, so normally when people are sharing videos on YouTube, you know, they'll stop it and interject and all of that. And I'm like, no, nah, you just need to listen to him preach. So as soon as he starts preaching about I am, I'm sitting next to Mama G and Papa and I'm looking at them and I'm like, Hello, what, hello, hello, but okay, I, it was just me and one other guy, shout, okay, fine, so he is, he had already started um, preaching on John 20, uh, Peter, excuse me, uh, Thomas saying, asking, and he won't believe unless he sees his near pierced hand, and again, you'll get that at the beginning of the sermon, the service, the sermon, and it, it was just, it was just so good. And when he said the paper I gave you, he gave us a sheet of paper with the, um, the words on the front and then the translations of each word on the back. So that's what he was referring to. So anyway, finished service. It was good. Again, the message was amazing. Served and then got on the highway to drive back up here. I'm about 20 minutes from home. So for those who are outside of the States listening to this uh, and those who know the country, country roads, there is no street lights, um, highway, well, on the highway, yes, there are lights here and there, but it's just none. So it's just dark. And so you're driving with your high beams. As I'm driving, a warning light on my car comes on 
and I'm like, okay, what's going on? Because of all the driving back and forth, I made sure that I had the tune-ups and make sure everything was okay, tires, engine, just everything was fine. Got a, The car got a good bill of health. So I'm like, what's going on? I started praying, Lord, that I will get home safely. I pull into the driveway, I get out the car, and before getting home, let me put it this, let me say this, while driving, yes, it was on a handset, hand, uh, 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 I was hands-free, I looked up what that indicator was, and it was for your tire pressure, my tire pressure. So I'm thinking, okay, what, these are brand new tires, what's going on? So I get home, get out of the car, and check each tire, and I get to the back rear, the back tire to, the, to my right, and I hear, and I'm like, oh no, I'm like what? Okay, so this is Sunday night. It's about 10.30 at night. I have to obviously get go into the facility early Monday morning. So I set my alarm to go off an hour or so earlier. As soon as I wake up, I think of the tire and I go and I look and I have a flat tire. And while, just to also share something, when I was with, out with uh, Mama G and Papa on, on Saturday, I kept thinking of my dad. So for those of you who don't know, my dad passed away a few years ago, actually in 2016. And what they were helping me with, he would have been someone, he, he would have been the one helping me with what they were helping me with on Saturday, right? Okay, so now here I am with this flat tire and obviously I'm thinking of my dad. So I end up calling, you know, cars, um, the tow truck and, you know, different things for those who have roadside assistance. Thankfully, I had a spare tire. Uh, the gentleman showed up and I just, I, and I started talking about my dad. So he takes off the tire. And when he takes off the tire, he says, hmm. And I'm like, what, what's, what, what do you mean? He said, there's a nail in your tire and I'm like are you kidding me and he said no look at it right there and there was this little silver like dot right if you take a marker and just do a dot but it was silver and he says yeah look at that and I'm like do you want to hear something I said last night I was in Dawsonville he was like why before I could say why I was it Dawson, he was like why are you all the way down there because again where I live and I said, there was a pastor preaching on Jesus' nail-pierced hands. And he start, he's like, what? And I said, listen, I don't know if you know Jesus, God is real, all this other stuff, right? We ended up talking, talking about his daughters and all of that. He had two daughters, my mom and dad, two daughters, okay? Fine. So he recommends a dealish uh, place that I can go to that was not too far from where I was going uh, to the facility. So I get to this particular location, to this, uh, not a dealer, a garage, right? Mechanic shop. So I walk in, explain the situation. They said, oh, this will take about 20 minutes um, and we'll determine how bad your tire is given, you know, where the nail is. So they take the car in the back. The young woman who, who uh, signs me in, I look back at her and I said, would you mind if I get, take, if you can give me the nail? And she says, okay, yeah, sure. And I explained to her Sunday night, which was the previous night about the pastor preaching on Jesus's nail pierced hand. So after about 15 minutes, she comes out, she says, your car is ready. And she was like, the, the, it's interesting because the nail doesn't have the point. Uh, where's a pen? So you know how a nail has this part on it, which would contribute to it going through a tire. She gives me the nail, guys. Here's the nail. There is no point. This is the top, which was in, that was shown, right? That, and I'm like, the devil's a liar, <laughs> right? So... I start driving back to the facility 
and the indicator light for the tire pressure had not gone out. So I thought, oh, okay, it'll probably go out after I drive a couple of miles. But I get about 10 miles, uh, give or take, from the shop and it hadn't gone out yet. So I call some of the gentlemen that I know, a gentleman that I know at the facility, and he's like, yeah, just bring it over, just, you know, drive in, stay, be safe and all that stuff. And me and somebody else who's at the facility, one of the guys, um, they're maintenance guys, maintenance team. Well, just take, take care of it for you. So I'm about five minutes from the facility. I get a call back and um, actually his name starts with G as well. He says, hey, you're going to have to go take it back. Um, go back to the shop because they have to recalibrate your sensors and all of that. And they can't do that for me. So I get off the highway, turn back around and head back to the garage. I have to stop the story there. Why? So remember, this is Monday. Friday at three something in the afternoon, people normally leave the facility about 3.30, 4 o'clock on um, Friday. Um, a lot of people get in at seven, eight o'clock in the morning. I get a phone call from a woman who's crying, hysterical, because she was supposed to be given something and it wasn't ready yet. I can't go into details. And I said, okay, ma'am. And I was telling her to calm down. This is a lady in her early seventies. I was telling her to calm down, to breathe. I got all of her information. And then I went on a search to get what it was she needed. I ended up calling her back saying, I'm going to have to wait until Monday. Um, and just told her to have a wonderful week. Um, she shouldn't have any fear because of the situation that she needed a report for. And again, she was just crying, hysterically, hyperventilating, okay? And I'm like, okay, this is demonic because this is not that serious. But okay, that was, remember, Friday, 3, 3 o'clock, 3.30, right? So now Monday, all I'm doing is thinking about, yes, I, I have the situa situation with my tire, but I'm thinking about getting to the um, location late, not being able to speak to this woman. I did not have the phone that I used specifically for that location. And so I'm thinking of her. But anyway, I get back on the highway, or rather I, I get off the highway, get back on the highway to go to the mechanics. You ready? Remember, Saturday I was with Mama G and Papa. They were helping with something that my, I would say, my, I would talk to my dad about. Tire, something I said I would talk to my dad about. I get to the mechanics and uh, the garage place and the woman says, you know, hey, what's wrong? And I said, oh, the sensor wasn't recalibrated. And she says, oh, I'm sorry, you had to come back. You know, and I said, you know what? Everything happens for a reason. She gets on the phone and she says, Isaac, come to the front. Isaac, come to the front. And as she's saying, Isaac, come to the front, I start bawling. Why? Because my dad's name was, is Isaac. So she starts, she turns bright red. She's getting goosebumps. And I'm like, that's the Holy Ghost. I'm crying. Her eyes are welling up with tears. And here comes this young guy, young, he's probably early 20s. You know, with, with oil, you know, dirty oil, uh, tall, you know, blue eyes. And he, he's like, and he looks at me, looks at her. He's like, what did he do wrong? And I just said, and she tells him, hey, you forgot to recalibrate the car because there was a lot of people in there. And he's like, okay. So he goes out. I go out with him, wiping my tears. And I explained to him that this is something I would have asked my dad about. And my dad's name was Isaac. And he's like, whoa. And I said, Jesus is real. Again, it's a long story because there was another woman that was there who comes from a family of Marines. She had the Marine emblem on her leg. We started talking, preached the gospel. That's a whole nother story. She said she was baptized seven years ago. And I said, well, your mouth wasn't baptized. And that's a whole, again, another testimony but I need to get up, get to what happened today. So I get to the office, found my phone was actually in my knapsack because I carry a knapsack, ended up getting what the woman who was crying hysterically on Monday, excuse me, on Friday needed. When I get my phone, she'd already sent me four text messages. 
So I, I text her back, letting her know I had a situation with my tire and I'm sorry that I, cause I did say I would get back in contact with you early Monday morning. So I get what she needed. I call her and I said, Mrs. X, I am going to bring this to you. She said, no, she says, I said, I have it. I can mail it out to you. She said, no, I'm going to come pick it up. And I said, well, how are you going to come pick it up? Because her husband is dealing with ailments as well. And she just was delayed. She says, you know what? I'll, I'll figure it out. I said, you know what? I will send, I will bring this to you, Mrs. X. And she said, you know, you don't have to do that. I know that's not your job. I, you know, and I said, you know what? I will bring this to you. What is your address? So before I tell you her address, not the real address, right? I was with Mama G on Saturday and Papa L, his name is Leyland, right? Talking about my dad, thinking about my dad. Get to the car, deal, the, the mechanics. Isaac is the one who fixed my car, right? Fixed the tire. She then gives me her address. She says it's one, two, three, Leyland, and I won't say Avenue Road or all that, but it's Leyland. And I start weeping again because here we are with Papa Leyland and now I'm going to this woman's house where she lives, one, two, three, Leyland, blank, right? So this is my Monday, you ready? So then another person, we drive to the woman's house, beautiful house, you can just see wealth, right? We walk into her house. There is a huge Buddha head with a embra, emblem, um, a, a, not an emerald, a jewel embedded in the head. And I'm like, okay, this is why you were having anxiety, panic attacks and all of that for this situation, for this particular thing. And it was just all this Asian, you know, these trinkets right that you see in buddhist temples and shaman houses and all of that stuff and i was like hmm okay this is why all of that happened on friday everybody's trying to figure out this this photo here i'm this painting i'm going to get to that in a minute so we give her what she needed the other person i was with we only had like five minutes so we leave and the person who I'm with, we leave out the house and she's like, did you see the doll? And I'm like, no, I didn't even see it. Thank you, Jesus. But I break all of that off, right? Why am I telling you about the Buddhist thing in her home? The Buddhist head in her home, which is an idol, people. It draws the demonic okay and it torments people all this all of you who practice buddhism and yoga and all of that you're calling demons into your body guys okay but that's a whole nother story that's a whole nother teaching on spiritual warfare right okay this the, the week was amazing god did a, a whole lot of things right on friday the woman that i prayed for who had been healed the week prior of all the pain where she couldn't hardly sit down and stand, she's leaving out and she see leaving out and she sees me and she says, thank you for praying for my son. Thank you for praying for my son because her son was just going down the wrong path. Her son tells her that he's going to surrender to Jesus Christ. He needs to give his life to Jesus. That's not something that I tell people to do because you don't have a life to give, but that's all that's Surrender to Jesus Christ. But she says that he says A, B, C, D. Here's the thing. When I had prayed for her, her son had came to pick her up that day. She leaves with her son. There's another woman, Hayuasi, that I pray for her son. Pray for the woman's son. A, B, C, D. On Friday, this past Friday, she comes and tells me that her son says A, B, C, D. Come on, y'all. Ah. Okay, so why is that not just that important? What is this about? And oh my goodness. Okay, why did I have to tell you about the woman and Leyland and the Buddhist head?
Okay, few weeks back, I was asked to come speak at the children's ministry at Christ Fellowship. I very rarely minister, preach, share, teach at churches here in the United States for multiple reasons. A lot of times God tells me no. And when I'm overseas and I come back and people are asking for me to come and teach and preach, and te the Lord just says no. But when the pastor of the children's church saw me a few weeks back, almost two months ago, and asked if I would teach the children, I automatically said yes. And let me tell you why. In November, December of last year, while I was sitting in the back of the sanctuary, I saw the hand of God, the hand of Jesus, however your theology wants to receive this, but a hand saying, and it was as if to say, go. And when I saw it, just so you can know, see, Right? I told a friend of mine about the vision and I described it to her and then we just started talking about it. And I said, and by the way, my friend who I'm talking about just sent me a text message. Just sent the text message. It's five o'clock Sunday and I'm going to take a picture of this for her. And so I shared it, shared it, and she just started painting. God just started letting, just having her paint, right? And so it's, if you can see, this is the G and O. So it's the go into all the world. Here is Jesus nail piercing. And in the middle, this represented children of God, right? So this is what she gave me for my birthday right for my birthday she gave this to me when i was in texas okay now why is this important when the pastor came up to me and asked what i teach at the children's church i automatically said yes it was the holy spirit because of that photo and she said that they were doing a series on going out and preaching, the God, going to do missions, going to other nations. So I said, of course, we were scheduled. I, they scheduled me for two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, I was supposed to move into this location on Saturday. Again, all things work together for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Something happened where I could not move on Saturday, so I had to move on that Sunday, and I had to be out of the location that I was in that weekend. So I called the pastor and told her Saturday afternoon that I could not preach on Sunday, and I was just so like, God, I know all things work together for your good, but I hate canceling things, okay, especially when the situation that I could was not of my doing, right? Last week, Sunday, Pastor Todd of the pastor of Christ Fellowship preached on going into all the nations and talked about sending the children. Now, I'll stop the story there. Church. Brace yourself for the shaking. Brace yourself. My eyes roam through the whole earth, he says, trying to find a people whose heart's completely loyal to me. And he says, I will show myself strong on their behalf. Deuteronomy says, the people that know their God shall be strong and do extraordinary exploits. Karen, there'll be a hundred young people that will be sent out of this place. A hundred young people. There's a revival happening in our young people at Pastor Anthony. We were there Wednesday night. Karen and I had, there's such a presence of God on Wednesday night, such incredible workers. Yeah. For 30 minutes after the service was over, they gathered around to pray. 
such a move of God in our children. Hear what I'm saying. They have taken their shoes off because daddy took their shoes off to pray. When you walk up and you see young people, children, before the Lord, prayer time and you see a father with one on his front and one on his back and that baby hearing his father pray not sitting home cooking not sitting home with everybody playing a video game and vegging out on the porch because you had a rough day but for one hour for one hour praying oh God do it again do it again and let it begin in me so those babies are hearing the, heart, the father's heart I can't tell you what God has in store for us lead the way adults lead the way legacy do you want to leave mom you're professional you're great you have that can you feel the presence of the Lord so strong in this place God do it again do it again but oh God would you do it through me The next three to five years of this revival are going to be so epic. Here in 100, listen, 100 young people will surrender their call, their life, and to answer the call of the ministry to missions, to serve the Lord in different roles. But they will say, here's specific what God's called me. There'll be 100 missionaries, pastors, leaders, worship leaders, teachers, sent out of this place all over the world a minimal of 100 don't fight it if you're your son your daughter or your grandchildren thank you Lord and everybody in the house said amen yeah. when the pastor of the children's church asked me to preach God laid it on my heart to buy passport holders for the children by X number of passport holders, pray over them. And I'll put that photo here as well in this video and I'll figure that out. Here, actually, here is a video that I, I recorded to ask people to pray about the children who will receive the passport holders. Here's that video. Hi everyone, hope you all are doing amazingly well. I just want to share a couple of things. Number one, thank you to all of you who consistently pray as I go into various nations, preaching the gospel and doing all that God has called us to do as it relates to being born again. Um, just thank you. I also want to share that I will be 
preaching tomorrow, uh, preaching the gospel to the children's ministry at Christ Fellowship tomorrow, which is May 22nd, which will be May 22nd. And I will be preaching on what does it mean to go to the nations. And I'm not preaching going on missions because when you go out your house and you're born again, that is an assignment, that is a mission. Right? We are to go out into all the world and preach, teach, cast out demons, raise the dead, heal the sick, cleanse the leopard, set captives free. Um, the map that you see that map was purchased in December of 2007. Why do I remember that? It's because I had just emailed my proposal, which is your final submission for my PhD program, my dissertation for my PhD program. And the Lord said, I, as soon as I hit send on the computer, I was bought, laying on the floor in my prayer room crying. And the Lord said, get up, go to Walmart, get a Walmart. And I wiped my tears, got up, went to Walmart, and it was late at night. Thank you, Lord, Walmart is open 24 hours. And I get there, and there's only one map. And when the person who was taking me around Walmart looking for the maps, they said, well, I guess that one map is just for you. And I said, you have no idea. I get back to my house, I have spread the map out, the Lord had me note these little black marks. Uh, let me see. Right, the little black marks. I'll uh, probably see it better there. On the map. And it was about four or five countries. And it was as if the Holy Spirit, well, not as if. The Holy Spirit put on my heart was, these are the countries you've been to. Imagine all the nations that I'll be taking you to. Obviously, God is saying, was saying all the nations he would take me to. I didn't know at that point in time it will be or would be 42 different countries. Um, so tomorrow, I will be showing the children my passports, also the visas, but the Lord also put on my heart to get passport holders for them. So that's what you see there, the pink, purple, and brown, and the blue, red, and black, and there's some light blue here, and there's supposed to be about 60 students, because I believe they range from the age of five to into the teens, so I'll say uh, students, not children. And I've been praying for them, whoever is supposed to get the passport holders, that every single place they are supposed to go, every nation that they're supposed to go into, that they will have no issues with getting visas into the nations, that there will be those waiting for them, who they are to meet, those who are to help them or whoever they are supposed to help. I feel the presence of the Lord, guys. Okay. Whew. Also, what you see here is currencies from everywhere, from Indonesia, Uganda, Nigeria, different parts of Asia, Europe, Africa, and their coins there as well. And what I am decreeing over them is the same thing that three specific people had said to me, and I will never forget it because they looked confused when they gave the prophetic word and they said, Beverly, it's as if all the currencies in the world will know your name. All the currencies in the world will know your name. And I didn't understand it at the time, but now I do. And I can tell you, every single country that I have gone into, within the first 24 hours of being in that country, I will either find money or someone random, not, would give me money or come up to me and pay for my hotel, pay for my food, just, just say, hey, I'm supposed to do this. And I just decree that is the portion that each one of these students will have in their life, over their life, for generations to come, that the embassies will be open to them, 
that they will have no problems with getting visas into the nations that would be challenging to get visas or the world will say it's challenging to get visas because I've gotten visas for different nations. I was about to call some of them out, but I'm not. And that is their portion. So everyone, just thank you for just, for those of you who are born again, thank you for loving Jesus. Thank you for just waking up in the middle of night, praying, praying for me, not knowing where I was at, but you prayed and sent a message saying, God woke me up at three or four o'clock in the morning to pray and the prayers were needed for me and my team. May that level of intercession be the same for every single pastor, teacher, evangelist, apostle, every single one called out to the nation, miss, miss, missionaries, lay person, someone who doesn't have a title, just, they're just, not just, they are children of God going into the nations. Everyone, thank you. Know that I am always praying for you. When God brings you to my heart on a plane, train, tut tut, know that I will decree and declare God's perfect will for you. Thank you. Bye. So you see everything that God wanted me to bring. My passports, the passport holders, the map that I got in 2007. Also, my Bibles that have traveled with me throughout the nation, throughout various nations, and the um, the map. Also, the round thing that you saw, it was actually an emblem that I got when I was at the United Nations. And when people ask, how do you know where God is sending you or whether or not you're supposed to stay or go? I had asked the Lord, am I going to be in the United States for a while? And am I going to be ministering in various ways here in the States? And about two days later, two or three days later, that emblem, which was on my keys, right? Keychain, it was keychain. It fell off, right? The United Nations representing countries around the world, that fell off of my keychain that I had for my car. And so that was for me, God saying, okay, stay focused here in the United States. You ready? So today I get to the service. Everything was prepared. The pastors of the children's church. First of all, as soon as I walked in, not the children's church because it's in the bigger church, but the ministry I felt the presence of the Lord, right? And I'm like, okay, Lord, the pastor, I, I'm just going to say a pastor Lizette, right? She, there's prayer and session at 9 a.m. Service starts at 10. She starts praying and interceding. And then near the end of prayer, she calls all the children together and they sit on the floor and she starts speaking to them. So as she is speaking to them, I'm just raising my hands because the part that I did not get recorded was she was explaining to them what intercession is. She said, I don't know why I'm going to share this, but I had an open vision or vision of Buddha. And I'm like, and she said, this is when God puts, and she's explaining to the children why God would put that on her heart or let her see that. And she was praying for a Buddhist family and praying for Asia. So I'm going to stop the story there. Why is that? I feel the presence of God. Why is that important? Who painted this? She is Korean American. Okay. So I received a text message this morning at 6, 6, 19 AM. When you, are. Uh, uh, when you travel a lot around the world, you receive text messages 2, 3, 5 a.m. in the morning. But the text message is from someone in South Korea. And I won't read all of it, but it says, Hello, Dr. Hammond. I hope you are having a really, really good rest because they know it's 6 a.m. my time. I thank you again for being a voice in my life. Okay, they share some of that. So now they share. And I have one thing to share, if you allow 
that I did not relate to my family background with Buddhist. That much even until you sent the testimony of one person getting out of Buddhism. Though I knew he was actively engaged in learning, I found out a YouTube, this person, it, their, their, their first language is Korean, the second language is, is English, but I'm reading exactly what they wrote. Though I knew he was actively engaged in learning, I found a YouTube video of my father with Buddhist monk one-on-one -on -one session of asking for truth and learning and so on. I see how he is exhausted and looking for something meaningful, but we know what he is doing is not the answer. Could you please pray for him? I will leave the link as well, but it is totally up to your decision to open it or not. And no, I'm not opening the link. And for the updates, and then he says some other things. And at the end, he says, have a really, really good day, Dr. Hammett. I wish very soon I praise the same God as your God. Thank you. So when Lisette was talking about this, I'm like, and of course I shared it with her at the, during the service. And I'm just in awe at the way God hears, not even awe, God hears our prayers because he says the prayers of the righteous availeth much. And he hears the prayers of the righteous and we're made righteous because of Jesus Christ imputing righteousness into us and onto us, right? So that preach, uh, teaches on intercession. She talks about the Buddhist family. Then, oh wait, before service even started, there was someone who I kept talking to and they kept saying, huh? And I'm like, what? And they said, I can't hear out of my both like it's hard for me to hear and i'm like why haven't you told me this and i won't say who it is so i take them out this is before the service started before intercession started i take them out and i said to them you need to repeat after me i didn't pray i didn't decree declare i didn't speak in tongues i said repeat after me and I asked them to repeat, Father, forgive me for accepting that because of my age, I'm going to lose my hearing. That is not your portion for my life. And as they are repent, as they're say, asking for forgiveness, not repenting, meaning they were repenting and asking for forgiveness because a lot of times people say, say I repent. No, repenting is an action. You stop doing something. You don't just say, I repent. You actually stop doing something. And as this person is saying, God, forgive me for accepting hearing loss. I do this in their ears and they're like, I can hear that. I can hear that. And so that's when I prayed. I decreed and declared that they will have no other issues with their hearing, that they will hear fine. And so we get back into the sanctuary and I start talking to them and I said, can you hear me? Because before they said with the noise, they, they, the noise, the other sound, the music, they couldn't hear. They were like, yes, I can hear you. I stepped back further. I said, can you hear me? They're like, yes, I can hear you. And I'm like, okay, okay. So that's the first healing before service started. So now back to the service. So now past, I can't, Pastor Mark gets up. He preaches. And I don't even realize it's the announcements. I'm shouting, amen. And he's like, okay, so that's the announcement. And I'm like, what? The children's church is not, I know it's children because they're five-year-olds to 13, 14-year-olds in there. But this man preached repentance as it relates to not listening to circular music, listening to music of the world. Why am I sharing that part? He preached, a, uh, he shared, preached, taught a lot. But on Friday, I sent a message to another person about how demonic this world's music is and that you should not be listening to it. Your children should not be listening to it. Not just only to this person, but to other people. I grew up in clubs. I know what it was and what it did to people. There's a number of people that I now know, or even when I became born again, and while still in New York City, that they were losing their mind. And it was because of not just 
not being born again, but being in rock clubs and listening to hard rock rap and just the world, even R&B, right? Even those perverted love songs. And even after being saved, I would tell people, if you're battling perversion, I'm not saying you're just sitting in it, but you're battling in it. You need to ask God to forgive you for listening to all those love songs. Right, that talked about having sex with this person and that person who broke your heart. I don't know who that's for, but you're welcome. So he talks about that. And then he also talks, and mind you, he's talking about the music. On Friday, I sent the links as it relates to the music being demonic, right? And worship people who are doing music, worshiping demons, okay? And so I'm like, okay, God, clearly. I wanted to talk about John 1, John, um, the, the uh, Mark, the end of Mark, John, John 14, Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all the scriptures that talk about going into the world and teaching, preaching the gospel, healing the sick. And God was saying, nope, talk about what it means to be born again, that you received Jesus Christ, that you believed him and you believe in him because you believe him and you receive him and you are born again. And I shared how as being born again in my 30s, how I wanted to be born again or asked God, why wasn't I born again when I was four, five, and six years old? And the children, guys, the presence of God on the children in that room in the ministry i was thinking okay this is this is oh my gosh so there's so many other things that i could share about what happened today but a couple of other things that i must share because i am going to pray for all of you who have children and i don't care if your children is 5 14 18 45 we're going to decree and declare that they have a supernatural encounter with Jesus Christ and that they not only believe your you as their parent or grandparent, but they will believe him, believe in Jesus and receive Jesus Christ. And the other thing I need to share with you is that when the pastor, Pastor um, Mark was preaching, teaching about not listening to circular music. I kept thinking about all those times being in clubs, not just in the United States, but in other parts of the world. And I shared with this, shared this with them as well. I was in clubs with people who believed that they were Christians. These are people who at six o'clock in the morning, because a lot of clubs closed at six o'clock in the morning, Sunday morning, they would come to me and say, Beverly, you need to come with us to church else you're going to hell. And I'm like, but wait, you were just sleeping with somebody's husband, snorting cocaine, winding, for those who dance reggae, winding, grinding on someone else's husband or boyfriend, but yet you kept telling me, or they would tell me that I was going to hell if I didn't go to church with them. People, you can go to church. God can heal you. I've seen people who God has healed supernaturally and they still deny that Jesus Christ is the son of God. He's savior. He's the only one that can save you. And so how did this all end? Well, after sharing, preaching, I started to pray for the children. I Well, I asked if the children had felt the presence of God while I was speaking to stand up. I had purchased 35 passport holders. 30 was for, excuse me, 25 was for children. The other 10 were for the adults and the older, ch older children. The children stand up, counted the children. We started praying for the children. And the words of knowledge for the children who have been called to nations just started flowing. Also letting children know that yes, they can believe their parents that Jesus Christ is real, but they need to believe Jesus by encountering him, 
believing in their heart and mind and receiving the one who's true. And they started sharing their testimonies about seeing Jesus, dreaming of Jesus, hearing Jesus. And as they shared, I could feel the presence of God. It was so angelic as these young ones some of them hands were hot burning and those are the ones who are called to lay hands well everyone is called to lay hands but their dominant gift their dominant calling is laying hands to heal the sick there were some who definitely called to preach and teach the gospel apologetically right apologetically not apologizing but using apologio right? And then there was this young man. I don't even remember his name. He had a cast. So he had a cast, I feel Jesus. And he had, um, a, I don't know if it was a baseball player's jersey, but I think it was a baseball player shirt. And on the back of the shirt, it was a number. The number is 13. So before you all get ratted out, the number 13, if you look at it, it's a B. <laughs> That's a whole nother story. But whenever I was in various situations where there was danger, I would see the number 13 and that would let me know God was saying everything is going to be okay. And again, that's a whole nother video. So he comes up and he says that, I asked him, is he in pain? He said, yes. His hand was like this. He couldn't move his fingers or could hardly move his fingers. Let me make sure it's clear. There were two young boys that God said, that God literally highlighted. It was as if a light shined on them and out of them. And God said, have those two pray for him. Just those two, no one else, just those two. He started to pray. I didn't lay hands on him. I started to decree and declare healing that the molecular makeup of his wrist, his arm, his elbow, and he does this. I can move my fingers. I can move my fingers and I'm thinking, come on, Jesus. So the two young men are praying for him. And I, I said, what happened? He said he broke his arm. And I'm like, okay, no, 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 this is being healed. So we put, decree and declare that his arm is healed, everything that you need to decree and declare. He says, can I take off the sling? And I'm like, yes, I feel you, Jesus. He takes off the sling and he lifts his arm up. Guys, sorry, I know that was loud in the mic. He lifts his arm up and he's like, well, not like this, but he's like, because it's in a cast. And I'm like, what is the pain level? Before he was like, no, it was really hurting before. And now it's like a four or five. And I said, let's pray again. So the two young men, they started to pray again. And we prayed. And he's like, it's definitely much better. Definitely much better. But then I'm feeling a tap on my back, right? And it's another little child. So I turned around and again, just praying, decreeing, thus saith the Lord over the children. And then they, the, the service was over. Then I started giving out the passport holders. I want to thank you all who not only pray for me and those who are going and preaching the gospel, but sewing into 3LS. Thank you so much because it was with your funds that I was able to purchase all of those passport holders. Okay, wait for it. You ready? So service is now over. Service is never over, by the way, people. We, we, the body is never asleep. The, the body is not, the service is never over. So all the children, well, most of the children leave out, give out a couple other things. I also brought all of the currencies that I had from different, that I have from different countries to also decree over them that they will lack no resources when it comes to them doing what God calls them to do. And so packing all of that up, the Lord had me give those passport holders to a couple of the adults as well. And one of the adults, so we have the ears opening at the beginning of the service, the arm being healed 
right? Uh, no pain. I, I'll see next week um, when I see them again, whether or not the cast is off and if it was healed completely. Father, heal his arm completely. Yes. Then there is someone that I also call Papa Paul. Someone had asked that we should pray for Papa Paul because he had a problem with breathing. So finish packing up, finish praying for the pastor and the pastors and their children. And now we're going to pray for Papa Paul. Papa Paul is just precious. He's just precious. And some of you know who Papa Paul is. So I said, Papa Paul, what's going on? He was like, you know, yes, I'm having issues with breathing. And this is what he was telling someone else as well. He says, but my spirit feels good. And I said, but Papa Paul, we have a mortal body. And yes, your spirit man feels good and, and you feel the Lord and all of that. But we have a mortal body and we are decreeing, declaring that you will breathe again and you will breathe well. So laid his, my hands on his chest and we started praying. Everyone who was left in the room started praying for Papa Paul. As I laid my hands on his chest, he takes, I say, take a deep breath. And when you breathe deeply, your diaphragm should expand. You feel it here and you feel it in your back, in the back. And this is again for those, oh, as a side note, I said every person who goes to another nation for missions, to preach at um, crusades, you need to take a CPR class. Yes, God will lead you. God definitely leads you. But you need to take a CPR class as well as look at the anatomy of people's bodies, of bodies, um, and study the anatomy so you can understand what you're feeling in your hands. Yes, the Holy Spirit will tell you, right? The Holy Spirit will tell you. At the same time, study, right? Study the body. So when I put my hand on his chest, when he breathed deeply, this did not expand. His stomach did not expand. His diaphragm did not expand. And it was just short breaths, short breaths. And we're all praying, we're just praying that you will breathe, that the molecular makeup of your bronchial tubes, your bronchi, your trachea, your nostrils, everything will open up. And he's just breathing and the breathing is getting, he's able to breathe deeper and then deeper. And then I said, Paul, ask God to forgive you for accepting this, not being able to breathe and some other things. And he said it out loud. And as soon as he said it, he breathed deep again. And then you could see, whew, thank you, Jesus. You can see his stomach expand a bit and he's now breathing and you can feel it in his back as well. If you, again, you can practice with your family members or your friends, but when you breathe deep, he's breathing and he's breathing and all you can do is feel not all you could do, obviously, because it's a lot happening. The presence of God on him, on everyone, actually. And he's breathing deeply and thanking Jesus and thanking Jesus for breath. And just we just started declaring that he will breathe. And then he fell, falls out. Thank you, Jesus. And a number of children, by the way, fell out as well. And yes, falling out, being slain in the spirit. Falling forward, falling sideward, sideward, falling to the side, all of that. Again, we'll talk about that later. So he gets up and he can breathe deeply. He can breathe again. Everyone, thank you so much for your prayers, your intercession, your declaration. Everything that you do to proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord in your own lives, for other people in my life, for everyone associated with 3LS Global. I thank you for praying for each and every child that I met today that just heard the gospel. Oh, one other thing. I had mentioned that when God started speaking to me about going to nations, that God will speak to you and teaching that he will tell you, he will speak to you. He will say the name of the nation and you may not even know the name or the city in the nation. And I mentioned how out of all the nations, out of all the cities that I shared today, 
I said I was home and I heard Mogudishu. Mogudishu. And I said, you know, I'm like, okay, is that a sneeze? Get a tissue? What's Mogadishu? And then I looked on the map and obviously it's in Eastern Africa. And I started sharing how God started talking to me about cities in different, I would hear it in different languages. And that is a tall tale sign that God is calling you and preparing you to go to specific nations, but you have to go next door and then down the block, and then to the next city, and then to the next state, and then he flies you out. And sometimes he just says, pack up as you're born again that day and sends you to another nation. So why am I bringing up Mogadishu? And I'll end with this. At the end of the service, while we're all talking, Pastor Mark, who preached the announcements, comes up and says, you won't, he doesn't say you won't believe this. He says something. And then he said, I was based in Mogadishu. And I remember when God woke me up, and this was years ago, when he woke me up and I heard Mogadishu, I got up, got online, and I saw what was going on in Mogadishu, and I just started praying. Praying for the safe return of those who are supposed to return safely, praying for the military, not just the American military, but those who are fighting against evil in Mogadishu. And here he is saying that he was in Mogadishu. <sighs> so everyone, when God wakes you up at three, four o'clock in the morning, or if it's two, three o'clock in the afternoon, and you're at work or you're driving down the street or on the highway and he brings a, a face to you. It could be someone you know or someone you don't know. Just pray. Pray what the Lord lays on your heart to pray. The Bible says we pray in tongues to edify us. But also the Bible says we pray when we don't know what else to pray. But if God is showing you someone Pray for that person, God, whatever it is that that person needs from you, may it be so here in the earth realm. May they know that you hear their prayers and that you hear the prayers of those who are praying for them. May your perfect will be done in their lives. May they know that you are Lord. If they're crying out, wanting to know God, if you're real, if there is a God, Lord, show yourself, have someone come to them and proclaim that there is a God and his name is Yahweh. That you are the true and living God that gave your son to the world so that we may have life and we only will have that life if we receive Jesus Christ. Everyone, thank you for your time. Thank you for all you do. And here is the song by Eddie James called I Am. Bye. Too hard. I am the shepherd and I